This lesson is about lo using linear functions in real-world situations. Suppose a balloon begins descending at a rate of 20 feet per minute from an elevation of 1350 feet. Write an equation to model the balloon's elevation as a function of time. So this sentence right here is telling us what our variables are going to be. So the balloon's elevation, L at B E, as a function of time, T. Interpret the slope in the y-intercept of your function means what does the slope in the y-intercept mean in terms of elevation and time? Graph your function. So the first thing we're going to do is come up with the function or an equation to model it. So the elevation has to be equal to a starting elevation of 1350. So it's 1350, you're assuming it's above ground or above sea level. If it was below sea level, it would be negative. And it's descending at a rate. Descending means go down. So at a rate of 20 feet per minute. So whenever you have a rate, this is your slope. So it's negative 20 feet per minute. So the slope is the rate of descent. So negative 20. And the y-intercept is where the balloon starts or the initial height of the balloon. I actually like the initial height better. So graph your function. So this is going to be in the first quadrant because we're not talking about negative time. T is going to go across here and the elevation and height is going to go vertical because this is the dependent variable and this is the independent variable. So if we have an initial amount of 1350, maybe I'll go up by we're going down 20. I'll make a break and start at 1300. Thirteen fifty, fourteen hundred. Actually, I'm gonna get rid of my break. Okay, so this would be twelve fifty, twelve hundred, and then this would be eleven fifty, and then here's my break. So time after minutes. So I'm gonna have minutes going across. So after one minute two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, etc. So if your starting point is 1350, or 1350, that's your initial amount. And then you're going to go down 20, right, right one. So it's about 1325. Down 20, right one. 1310. Down 20, Right one, 1290, etc. So it's a constant rate of change. I also, I did not graph anything over here because we're not talking about negative time. That's why we stayed in the first quadrant. Okay, number one. The candle is seven inches tall after burning one hour and five inches tall after burning two hours. So we don't have an initial, we don't have a slope off the bat or a y-intercept that's obvious. But I do have two points, two ordered pairs. So if I have 7 inches tall 1 hour, 5 inches tall 2 hours, I can make two ordered pairs. So I'm going to be careful that the time is the x. Time is the independent variable. So 1, 7 and 2, 5. Those are my points. So if I have to write an equation, go back to writing equation given at two points. You're going to want to use point slope form. So I have to find the slope for it first. So it's 7 minus 5 over 1 minus 2, which is 2 over negative 1 or negative 2. So now my equation will be y minus 5, using this one, equals negative 2 times x minus 2. I use point-slope form. How tall 
Well, the candle B after 3 hours means plug in 3 for x. So y minus 5 equals negative 2 times 3 minus 1. Then add 5 to solve for y. So do order of operations. 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 5 is 1. So it's going to be 1 inch, 1 inch tall. So the next page, we're going to do scatter plots, but go back to correlation that we discussed in Algebra 1. So if I had, I know that this is positive correlation because if I wanted to model this with a line, the, the dots look like they're going up from left to right. Up from left to right. Negative, negative. Can't even draw a line, so it's no correlation. You can either have weak or strong correlation. This is weak because the lines, the, the points are, are not all clustered together on the line. This is strong because the dots are clustered together. Okay, for this problem, a woman is considering buying a 1999 vehicle for 4100 Create a scatter plot below of the data. Is a linear model reasonable? Which means that if you plotted these points, let's see, as the model year goes up, the price is up. So it's going to look something like this. So if it was a linear model, it the when you graph the scatter plot, scatter point plot, excuse me, it looks like a line. So if you get something and you graph it and it's all over the place, it's not a line. It's not a linear model. If you get something and it makes more of a curve, it also doesn't fit linear very well. So what you're going to do is you're going to put in this into your calculator and I'm going to link up a video on how to do Let's get a linear model in your TI-84 calculator. So your X1 and Y1, when you go to your list, your X1 is going to be 2000 And there's two prices for 2000 So you have to put both of them in. You have to put 5784 in and 5434 in. And then there's two prices for 2001. So you're going to have to list both 2001s in and make sure next to it you have these two. And then you're going to keep going. So in the end, you should have, you will have five or 10 X1s and 10 Y1s. Then is 4,100 4, a fair price? So what you're going to do is after you do your linear regression, you're going to look up and see if if you have a price of 410, four, I mean $4,100, is that going to be good for a 99 vehicle? So if this was your line of best fit, you would want to have 4100 1999 close to the line. If the point was far off the line, either above or below, it's not really a fair price. So the buttons you're going to use in your calculator, and I'll link up a video when you do linear regression, is you're going to want to go to stat. When you go to stat, you're going to be able to edit a list into your the calculator doesn't use X1, Y1, but it uses L1, L2. So you put them in there. Then you're going to want to go to Stat again. And this time you're going to go to Calc. Slide over to Calc. And then slide down to Linear Regression, which I'll, I'll link up a, a calculator video to show you how.